Namo Buddhaya, welcome. This is Abhinav. In this uh, video, I am sharing my learnings from Middle Discourses 49. Uh, the title of the discourse is on the invitation of the Brahma. Uh, now, this discourse is a very dramatic kind of a discourse whereby uh, Buddha is sharing about this incident that uh, uh, he met Brahma and uh, he had certain wrong views and Buddha corrected his wrong view and at that time Mara appeared. Mara is what? Mara is the personification of evil, personification of wickedness. And he appeared and he tried to uh, dissuade Brahma that, you know, uh, don't, you know, uh, uh, try to change the views of the uh, Brahma because he wanted to keep, Mara always wants people to be in the wrong view so that they do not liberate from the samsara, they remain in suffering. But Buddha was so strong and powerful that Buddha totally, you know, kind of showed Mara where he was. And Buddha said that I am above you in every way. And uh, uh, he said that you cannot dissuade, me. you cannot like overcome me because I am the knower, I am the fully realized one. So don't try to, you know, uh, convert me. I know what is the truth, right? And uh, you, do, you don't have any power to power on me. So this is a very, very, very interesting and dramatic uh, discourse. It's like a, uh, a bit long. So I will take up the main, main things so that you get a perspective. The link to the entire discourse is given in the description. You can uh, read the discourse at your end and get your own insights. Okay. So basically it is Buddha is saying that uh, uh, he, Buddha was, Buddha saying, Buddha is saying that one time a uh, mendicants, I was staying near Uttakha in the Subanga forest. Uh, uh, at the root of a magnificent sal tree. Now at that time, Baka, the Brahma, had following harmful con misconception. This is permanent. This is everlasting. This is eternal. This is whole. This is imperishable. That means this creation is permanent, everlasting, whole, imperishable. For this is where there is no being born, growing old, dying, passing away or being reborn. And there is no other escape beyond this. That means there is this finite uh, uh, creation. There is uh, no bo bo birth dying in this creation. And there is no escape from this creation. So Buddha said that I knew what Baka the Brahma was thinking. As it is easily as a strong person would extend or contract his arm. I vanished from the Subhanga forest and reappeared in the Brahma realm. So basically Buddha had this power in him that he could travel distances through the power of his mind. So Buddha vanished from the uh, Subhanga forest, entered the Brahma realm and when Baka came and he said, welcome, good, good sir, it has been a long time since you took an opportunity. And then he said the same thing. This is permanent, this is everlasting. Then Buddha said, alas, Baka the Brahma, you is lost in ignorance. Alas, Baka the Brahma is lost in ignorance. Because what is actually impermanent, not lasting, transient, incomplete and perishable, he says is permanent, everlasting, eternal, complete and imperishable. And where there is being born, growing old, dying, passing away and being reborn, he says there is no being born, growing old, dying, passing away or being reborn. And although there is another escape beyond this, he says there is no escape beyond this. Now, please understand, Buddha's, Buddha's point of view was, and once he got realized, he understood that this is there is no permanent self. It is all changing. It is this samsara is suffering. There is no permanent self. And the way of escape from this samsara is the Four Noble Truths and the Noble Eightfold Path. This directly contradicts the, 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 the teaching in the Vedas also which says that there is one eternal self, Tat Tattva Masi, right? There is this one self which is eternal and imperishable. So Buddha said nothing like this is there. This is wrong knowledge, wrong view, right? And that is why, you know, there is this tussle between the Brahminists. Uh, they, you know, they try to put down the uh, Buddha because his, his teaching was directly contradictory to the Vedas and Buddha totally ignored, uh, rejected the Vedas, right? Because of this and many other things like caste system, animal sacrifice and all. Right? So then what happened is, so Buddha is saying that alas, this 
Bhaka the Brahma is holding this wrong view. Even being in the God realm, you are having this wrong view that this is an in, uh, this is a permanent uh, uh, existence, which is not at all the case. Because the see the friends, what my limited understanding of this factor is, till the time you think that this creation is permanent, there is some ex- permanent self, and I, we are permanent, and you know all this this particular theory that there is a permanent self, and we are part of this permanent self. There is no liberation because there is no escape. There is no escape from samsara. You are will you will continue to exist if you have this wrong view that there is this permanent self and this unchanging self. And it is precisely the reason why we crave for things, why we are stuck in the craving because we think we are permanent. Other person or other thing is permanent. That is the where we the craving are, ha- happens. Right when we realize that everything is changing, when that. Is this view is very strongly established in us, then we can easily let go of our attachments and our cravings. So, so this was so Buddha said that this uh, person is, ha- you know, having this wrong view. Brahma is ra- having the wrong view. Then what happened? The Mara, the entry of Mara happens, right? Uh, in this scene, Mara, the wicked, took possession of a member of a Brahma's retinue, and said this to me. Mendicant, mendicant, don't attack this one. Don't attack this one. For this is Brahma, the great Brahma, vanquisher, unvanquished, universal seer, editor of power, God Almighty, maker, creator, the force, becater, controller, father of those who have been born and those who are yet to be born. So basically, Mara, seeing that Buddha was now uh, helping the Brahma come out of his wrong view, said because he because. If still the person is in a wrong view, he is in the control of Mara. The moment the person gets out of his wrong view, he escapes the control of Mara, right? So he says, "Don't attack this." First of all, he said, "Mendicant, mendicant," which is like he was kind of demeaning the Buddha by saying him and mendicant. A Buddha was a fully realized being, a master, and he just used the words for him, mendicant, because for him, for Mara, Buddha was not a like a very uh, you know he would not want to respect Buddha. Right, because he was he was there to awaken people from their sleep, and Mara was what trying to keep people in their sleep and in their suffering. So he used the word mendicant. He said, "Don't attack this one." That means, don't try to enlighten this this person, right? Because he is Brahma, he is the God, he is the Creator, right? And so then he said, "There have been ascetics and Brahmins before you who have criticized and loathed earth, water, air, fire, creatures, God, progenitor Brahma." Now. This refers to many of the Jain ascetics also, like Jains, Jainism also. They totally ignored the Vedas, right? So they said that they had also done that, and they were reborn in a lower realm after death. And then he said there have been many ascetics who have approved and praised the earth, water, fire, air, and progenitor. And when they died, they were reborn in a higher realm, right? This is like the especially those sages who were very much revered in the Vedas and all. Right, so he was trying to dissuade the 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 Buddha that don't do that. Right, so he said, "So mendicant, I tell you this. Please do, good sir, do exactly what Brahma says. Don't go beyond the word of the Brahma. If you do, then the consequences for you will be like that of a person who, when Lady Luck approaches, wards her off with a staff, or someone who shows away the ground as they fall down in the abyss into hell. Please, dear sir, do exactly what the Brahma says." Do don't go beyond the word of the Brahma, right? And this is how the Mara said. So then, what see what the Buddha says, right? Now Buddha knows about Mara. Now Buddha is a fully realized one. He knows how. You know, this is Mara, the mind which plays the tricks. So we, because we are not enlightened, Mara, uh, Mara plays tricks on us, and we 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 go into the sensual pleasures and all these things. We get stuck. But Buddha was a fully enlightened one. So Mara cannot control Buddha. So Buddha said, "Mara, I know you, wicked one. Do not think he does not know me." So Buddha said, "Don't think that I don't know you. I know you very well. You are Mara, the wicked, and Brahma, Brahma's assembly and Brahma's retinue have all fallen in your hands. They are all under your sway. That means you have taken all of them under your sway, under your influence, and you think maybe this one too has fallen into my hands." Maybe he is under my sway, but I haven't fallen in your sway. 
I am not under your sway. So Buddha is saying, I am I have not fallen into right into the into your sway. So, so then there is this discussion between Buddha and Mara and you know basically Baka and the Baka wanted to show to the Brahma uh, to the Buddha that there is a lot of you know power that he has and Buddha says that I have much more power than you where your power ends my power is in, in higher in range even than your power so there is a lot of discussion on that and Buddha actually showed him that where his power li got limited to a certain extent, Buddha's power even went beyond that. I'm not like seeing the exact thing because it's a quite a long discourse. So Buddha, for example, there is this thing Buddha said that I understand your range of light, but there's another realm that you do not know or see, but I know and see. There is this realm named after the gods of streaming radiance. You passed away from there and were reborn here. That means you have passed away from that. So that God, that Brahma was of that, this level, right? At that, this realm. There are even higher realms that that God, Brahma, Bakada Brahma was not even aware. Which Buddha told him, Buddha reminded him. You passed away from those realms and were reborn here. You've dwelt here so long that you've forgotten about that. So you don't know or see it. But I know and see it. So Brahma, I am not your equal in knowledge. Still less your inferior, rather I know more of you. Then Buddha talks about a lot of things which the Bakada Brahma was not aware, which Buddha was, was aware. So then, so the Baka said, now Baka was also saying, Baka said that, well, good sir, if you have directly known what is not within the scope of experience, based on all, may your words not turn out to be hollow. Right? So, so Consciousness that is invisible, infinite, entirely given up, that's not what is within the scope of experience. So then Baka said, oh, uh, 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 so Baka Brahma said that, okay, I will vanish. I will show you that I, I will vanish from you. So he said, okay, Buddha said, okay, vanish from me if you can. Then Baka, the Brahma said, I will vanish from the ascetic Gautama. I will vanish from the ascetic Gautama. But he was unable to vanish from me. So Buddha said, so I asked him, well, now look, Brahma, I will vanish from you. So, Baka said, okay, sir, good, vanish from me if you can. Then, Buddha said, I use my psychic power to will that my voice would extend so that Brahma, his assembly and his retinue would hear me, but they would not see me. And while invisible, I recited this verse. Now, friends, hear this verse. This is very powerful verse that Buddha said. Seeing the danger in continued existence, that life in any existence will cease to be. I didn't welcome any kind of existence and didn't grasp at relishing. That means Buddha said that seeing the danger, once I realized this danger of continued existence, this suffering that will continue if I continue to exist, life in any existence will cease. That means the wheel of birth, constant rebirthing will cease. One stops being born, one ends his defilements and stops being born. I didn't welcome any kind of existence. So this is the mistake. They, people want to live long. People want to live in heaven. People want to live in, you know, next worlds. Buddha said, I didn't welcome any kind of existence. And I didn't grasp at relishing. No grasping. No attachments. Right? And then the Brahma and his assembly and his retinue, their minds full of wonder and amazement thought, oh, how incredible, how amazing. The ascetic Gautama has such psychic power and might. We have never before seen or heard any of the other ascetic or Brahman with psychic power and might like the ascetic Gautama who has gone forth from the Sakya clan. Though people enjoy continued existence, loving it so much, he has extracted it root and all. So he has taken himself out of that continued existence through his sheer effort and sheer penance over many many lives, Buddha finally took him out of this this constant you know karmic force of continued existence then mara again came because then mara wanted to intervene because this was going haywire buddha showed his dominance showed his superiority showed his immense psychic power and brahma was anyways amazed so mara thought that let me salvage it otherwise you know the views of this brahma will change so mara 
took possession of a member of the Brahma's retinue and said this to me. If this is your understanding, do not present it to your disciples. Do not teach this Dhamma to your disciples. Do not wish this for your disciples. That means, basically Mara said, okay, this is your understanding, no? He said to Buddha, okay, keep it with yourself. Please don't spread it to others. Because, see, he realized that if this knowledge would spread to people, then they will all come out of suffering. So he said, please, please, just keep it to yourself. Don't spread it. But friends, go back to the first discourse that Buddha gave in Sarnath. When he gave that discourse, there was the, the 10,000 world systems shook. And there was this prediction that the 10, the, the, the Dhamma, the wheel of the Dhamma has started. Now it cannot be turned by, by any gods, Maras, recluses, Brahmins or anyone in the world. So when Buddha gave that discourse in Sarnath, the Dhamma wheel had started. Now anyone can try anything that Dhamma wheel will not stop. Right? So, Mara tried to convince Buddha that please don't say anything more. Right? So, so he's saying that uh, before you, there have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, ascetics who have claimed themselves to be perfectly, uh, 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 perfectly uh, enlightened, fully awakened Buddhas. And when their bodies broke up, they were reborn in a lower realm. Uh, right? They did not present each other wish for their disciples going forth. So, mendicant, I tell you this, remain passive. That means, please, be passive, dwelling in blissful meditation, for this is better left unsaid. Good sir, do not instruct others. So, then Buddha said, I said to Mara, I know you, wicked one, do not think he doesn't know me. That means, don't think that I don't know you. You are Mara the wicked. You don't speak to me out of this, out of compassion, but with no compassion. That means, what you are speaking to me is, you are speaking to me because you have no compassion about me. You have your own agendas. For you think those who the ascetic Gautama teaches will go beyond my reach. That means, like students like you and me, if we study the Buddha's teachings, we will go beyond the reach of the Mara, which Mara doesn't want. So Mara doesn't want Buddha to teach. But Buddha said, those who formerly claimed to be fully awakened Buddhas were not in fact fully awakened Buddhas. But I am. The realized one remains as such whether or not he teaches his disciples. The realized one remains as such whether or not he presents the teaching to disciples. Why is that? Because the realized one has given up the defilements that are corrupting, leading to future lives, hurtful, resulting in suffering and future rebirth, old age and death. He has cut them off at the root, made them like a palm stump, obliterated them so they are unable to arise in future. Just as a palm tree with its crown cut off is incapable of further growth, the realized one has given up the defilements that are corrupting, leading to future lives, hurtful, resulting in suffering and future rebirth. He has cut them off at the root, made them like a palm stump, obliterating them. And so, because of the silencing of Mara and because of the invitation of the Brahma, the name of the discussion is on the invitation of the Brahma. So this is the uh, uh, middle Discourse 49 on the invitation of the Brahma where Buddha taught the, cautioned the, uh, the, the uh, Bhaka, the Brahma that please don't have this wrong view. You are at a, that level, right? But don't, because see, what Buddha said that even the gods who are at a higher level, they are also subject to impermanence. They are also subject to suffering if they have the wrong view. So Buddha corrected his view and when Mara came in between, Buddha silenced him. Right? That you, you, I know you. Don't think that I don't know you. And uh, you uh, basically want me to not speak because speaking, teaching the Dhamma will take many people out of your push. So friends, what is important here is, number one, having the right view of impermanence, doing our meditation, doing our Vipassana, doing our inside meditation, Practicing mindfulness and we will ourselves, the insight will unfold in us that everything is impermanent. If we look closely our life, our jobs, our relationships, you will realize that everything is actually impermanent. It's only this false illusion. It's like a fan which is on full speed. It's moving but the fan gives an illusion that it is not moving. That is this illusion of this self which Buddha totally rejected. It's just let's follow our teacher. 
let's follow the path that is given by our teacher let's not get swayed by the mara right there are various mara will come in various forms in terms of doubt in terms of laziness sensual desire right restlessness all these hindrances let's not get swayed let's just commit to our path and let us keep practicing i hope this video was insightful and helpful in any way if you have any uh, comments or if you have any insights to share do share in the comment section thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaya namo buddhaya